Welcome to part two of the new data type series. It's also the last part of this series. And if you haven't yet, watch the first part first, because that's where you get the understanding of what the new data types are and why they're so important. But this second part, we're gonna focus on how you can create your own. Oh yes, you can do it. So how you can create your own data types in Excel. Now there are two ways you can do that. First, first is about using Power Query. So it's done through Excel You're using Power Query and you simply package up your data, uh, new data type into a single value, load it up, and then that single value can be extracted into multiple values, into multiple attributes, just like we showed in the first video. Now the second one, that's the one that's really interesting. That's where you get to send a table to Power BI, which you would anyway, right? As part of a data model, you would send a table to Power BI. But now those table can be set as feature tables. That's what they're called. And if a table is set as feature table and is published to the Power BI service, you can then access it through Excel as an organizational data type. And so we're gonna create both of those now. Um, and the first one, we're not just gonna create it, we're actually gonna wrap it up in a kind of a learning experience. So we're gonna do slight data modeling just to get to the result that will actually bring benefit to us. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot a power query but we're gonna load two tables. This is a product table, so this is a dimension of product, where we simply have the ID, the name, the category, and the group, and then we have the sales table, right? And the sales table is connected to our product table through product ID, right? Okay, so let's load these two tables into Power Query, and then let's create our new data type. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this. We're gonna select the sales table and then go into data from sheet. Now, this command could also be from range or table range, whichever version you're working with. It does the same thing. So it takes that and it loads it into Power Query. And now for the second one, I'm not going to go through the process again. I'm just going to duplicate this, delete the change type, remove this, and then select the products table. And I'm also gonna call this product like this. Okay, so now we have our sales table and we have our products table. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our sales table and we're gonna merge it with the product table. So we're gonna do basically what you never do Right? When you have your fact table and you have your dimension, the reason you have your dimension is so you don't repeat the same data multiple times. You just have the ID and then the dimension table tells you what's the name of that product and the category and so on. But now we're going to create that giant normalized table because what we get as a result is a single table. Right? But this is where the strength of what we're doing will actually show. So what we're going to do is we're going to Go home, we're going to go merge queries and we're going to take the product ID in our sales table. We're going to take the products, product ID, we're going to go OK. And what we're going to extract is the name, the category and the group. We're not going to use the original column name as prefix. We'll go OK. And now we're going to select the three columns and we're going to bring them to where they actually belong. So right after product ID, like this, right? So now we have a single table. This one was just so we could do the merge. We have a single table and within it, we have all these four columns of data. But now I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna select all these four columns and then I'm gonna go transform, create data type. So I'm gonna create a data type from this. 
the data type name will be products and the display column will be product ID. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to just leave the column product ID visible and all the rest of them will sort of be inserted into that column as those lookup tables that we talked about yesterday. So I go OK. And now you can see that this is a special column. It says it's a data type and it also has a extend icon where I could you know bring those columns back but I don't want to so what I want to do is I want to load this to Excel and I'm just going to go close and load it's going to load the products also but I'm just going to remove that one anyways so I'm going to load these two and as far as the product query goes I'm just going to delete the sheet and if I delete the sheet the product will go to connection only now the sales that's the one that's interesting to me this one's gonna load now and as soon as it loads you're gonna see that it's basically just the sales table like we have here right it looks the same but then we have products down here and as soon as I select products it says well there are multiple columns within that value and now I can go well give me the product name and there it is. Now give me the product category and there it is. I hope you find this as brilliant as it is because imagine you could basically take your whole model, your fact table and all the dimensions and package them into your fact table. You load that one but then anytime you need that extra column you just expand it out and that is pure brilliance. Okay, so that's it for making a new data type with Power Query. Now let's go to the second one. Now the second one is interesting because the second one is creating that with Power BI. So you start with, we're, we're going to start from scratch. So a blank Power BI desktop. I'm going to say import data from Excel. I'm going to go into this Excel and I'm just going to grab everything. So I'm going to grab all the tables from this Excel like this. But the one that we're really interested in is this Excel Olympics product. It's, it's the same table as we looked at before. And I'm just going to go load. I'm not even going to bother with the, uh, with the transformation step. So I'm just going to load this. And as I load it, it's also going to recognize the column names and the column types. And as it does that, it's going to create all the connections for me because the column names are identical and the types are identical. So you can see that it also, it built the model for me. Now from here, I could go into, you know, building my reports, but I'm not gonna because the only thing we need to do to have this table be our organizational data type is this. We take this table, we select it, and then over here on properties, we select that this E is a featured table. So this is a featured table. And as soon as I select that, I can enter a description. So this is Excel Olympics products live. And then the row label will be product, so that's a product name, but the key column, so this is, we're talking about primary keys here, is our product ID. I'm going to save this. And as soon as I do, I'm going to have to save this up and I'm going to, and I'm going to give it a name underscore AA. Now, you never give it a name like that. The reason I'm doing that is so I will notice it in my Power BI service immediately. Now I'm going to publish it and I'm going to publish this into my workspace. So I'm selecting that one. And as soon as I did that, you're going to notice. So let me just go into my Power BI service. 
And there it is, underscore AA. So now we have it, right? We have it in Power BI. Here it is. Now the, the report is blank because I didn't create a report from this. But what's key now is what do I get in Excel? And let me just remember like two or three product IDs. So one is free, one is six, and one is 21. Okay, so now I'll give it a three and a six, and I'll also do another thing. I'll actually create a table from this. I wouldn't have to, but I will. And I'll call this prod ID, just so it's not called exactly the same, but you'll still see what it does. And now I can select these two. And as I go into data, and as I go in my data types, you can now see that I have the Excel Olympics products data. Right? You can see my description over there. And now all I need to do is say, well, this is Excel Olympics products data. And it just said, okay, I recognize it. These are the products you're talking about. And now I can expand this and I can say, well, give me the category of those products. Give me the group of those products. And if I wanted to, I could also get the ID back. <laughs> but either way, you see how brilliant this is? We have our Power BI, we have our reports. Those are our organizational reports, the one source of truth. And now I'm pulling that into Excel. And what's brilliant is now I can have my 21, which is product 21, and there it is. Now that is pure brilliance. And the ways that this can be built upon are just endless. For this video, that's it. So these are the two ways that you can build your own data types today. And I hope that you're as amazed as you should be. And I hope you start building your own data types within your company. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.